Hello everybody and welcome to the Save File Podcast. Uh, today with me is a man who's been training with Goku for the past two weeks but got really tired and quit, uh, Master Anth. Yo, what up? i got uh, the Destroyer of Worlds, Jiren, <laughs> also known as Charbel. Hey, what's up? You're not going to get used to it, No, you? I'm not. <laughs> and I am the Plug, also known as Josh. And today we're going to be talking about video games sometimes. <laughs> Let's see, today on the menu, we've got the Pokemon Switch rumors, which have recently been confirmed. EB Games and their pre-order services, because Charvel has stories. And uh, some Kingdom Hearts news from Anthony. And at the end, we're going to wrap it up with a nice little debate, and then that'll be it for today. So, you guys ready to start off with the Pokemon Switch stuff? Let's do it. Yep. Alright, so what do you guys know about the Pokemon Switch stuff already? Well, I currently know it's called Let's Go Pokemon and Eevee. Yes. And I think that's all I heard from it so far. All right, and Sharps, what do you know? Not much. I know that there was a Pokemon game rumored to be coming, just like a proper Pokemon RPG rumored to be coming to the Switch. My question now is, that's why right. is it? Wait, why is it called Let's Go Pokemon and Eevee? Oh, because I I will get into this. I have I have the many informations. I am the plug. plug. Well, yes, it is a yellow reboot, not a remake, as people were saying before. I don't know if you guys heard about that. Yeah, that I heard. Uh, The two versions are Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Um, This is... uh, What I'm imagining is this is more of like... They're trying to reboot the series. They're trying to throw it back to, like, the early days of Pokemon. So, like, a change of titles like this is pretty interesting. But uh, the reason why Eevee is... uh, Did either of you two play Pokemon Yellow? Uh, I have played it a bit, but I think I have to train a bit more. I, I think I spent half the time playing my Game Boy Color playing Pokemon Yellow. I did play Leaf Green, though. Mm. Uh, in Pokemon Yellow, you are, you start off with a Pikachu, and your rival start off with an Eevee. So that's why uh, the new two new games, oh. obviously being Pokemon Yellow reboots, are uh, centered around um, Pikachu and Eevee. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, right. Re- Yep. The original trainers, Red and Blue, we all know them now, uh, do make a return in this game. However, this is uh, this is not as the main characters. You will be uh, playing two new trainers, and uh, your rival will be a new trainer as well. So, new story, it's completely a reboot, it's not a remake. So we can dash aside those um, rumors already. Uh, following behind you, Pokemon Return, which is the best feature that they ever implemented, according to the entire fan base. Uh, did either of you two play Pokemon Soul Silver or Heart Gold? Yep, I, Soul Silver. I didn't. <laughs> and how good was that Poker Follow feature? Oh, 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 yes. Having having like a uh, bloody Groudon behind you, destroyer of land, and also creator of land. Oh, I loved it when my Ferrigator would like have a smiley face every time. <laughs> like goes, yeah. you turn around. I, I love the one. Hello. <laughs> I love the one where uh, you got like Dialga or something, and it's like Dialga playfully pokes you in the stomach. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, Dialga just murdered me. The god of time boops you in the stomach. Yep. <laughs> hey, gems are still being replaced with the uh, Poker Ride feature from Sun and Moon. Which, Shabelle, you didn't play Pokemon Sun and Moon, did you? Nope. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> basically, um, hey, gems from the old games are replaced with essentially these key item Pokemon. Uh, like Lapras and that for Surf and uh, Charizard for Fly, so you can round out your party without having to worry about HMs. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, there's an online hub for players, so I'm assuming this harkens back to the uh, old Diamond and Pearl days, if you guys played that online, where you got to uh, go in this little room. Yeah, yeah, I played that. That was so cool. Yeah, that was that was fun. I liked, I liked that. Uh, Pokemon Go integration, which is basically like the, uh, the Pokech thing from SoulSilver, where... You can bring your Pokemon down onto Pokemon Go and keep it there like a daycare, walk around with it, gain experience, and trade it back up. It's not going to be pretty much any further than that. Like, I would really struggle to see them integrating it any further than that. Mm. Uh, Catching Pokemon works in, like, Pokemon Go, so we're going to be throwing our Pokeballs and probably missing a whole fucking lot. (laughs) Did you play Pokemon Go at all, Sharps? Nope. I, like, I downloaded it. I downloaded it, and I was like... Bear in mind, I downloaded it after everyone else. But I was just like, I'm going to care about this for about two and a half days and then I'm going to just call it quits when I can't be bothered trying to catch shit. So I'm just like, don't worry about it. 
<laughs> basically you had to like you had to like flick the pokeball yeah around. i know how it I works remember. it's very engaging I'm... yeah it's very engaging but like imagine a full-fledged pokemon rpg where you can miss oh man I can just picture myself. Oh, yeah, I can picture myself just launching my Samsung out a window after failing to catch like a. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. Uh, apparently, there will be rewards for integrating your Pokemon Go account uh, with the um, with the Pokemon Switch, which will be interesting. Shit. So if you have Pokemon Go on your phone <laughs> and you connect it to the account, you might get it like a little bonus or something. Maybe some items. Uh, new accessories will be available to purchase for uh, both Pokemon Go and the games. And it should be releasing later this year. Now, that's, um... Those are the, uh... Con- I know they're real, because above the text I have here is real leaks. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, one of the things that we have to uh, look at here is this picture I have. If you guys... Go- I put it in the Discord for you guys to have a look yeah, at. Yeah, I see. Um, this very blurry picture here. This picture is basically been confirmed. I, this is an actual in-game screenshot of the game. But what do you mean? It's basically been confirmed. Who confirmed it's it? It's basically been confirmed. with all the uh, with all the information that we have now, and the fact that this picture keeps getting taken down wherever it's put up, and it's one of the only a lot of like fake screenshots have come out, and they have gotten no attention from anyone trying to take them down. Mm-hmm. And this actually matches up with a lot of the new information we have. So. Pokemon Wild Encounters are going to be played out differently. They're not going to be random encounters you're just, like, surfing through and you suddenly you're in a battle. You're going to see the Pokemon, like, out there in the wild. Like, Amph, it's like Earthbound, when, or Tales of, when you see, like, the enemies out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's basically modern, like, um, Dragon Quest now. Yeah, modern Dragon Quest. Like, if you have a look at the image, uh, you can see, like, there's a Gyarados tail in the corner and a Magikarp floating around and a Tentacruel. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so you're going to be able to, like... It's going to be more of an active encounter system. Oh, yeah, that. And from what I understand... Yeah. Yeah, no, th- that sounds actually really cool. I'm actually really cool with that, because being able to... S- shiny hunting is going to be really interesting with this system. I'm interested. Yes. Uh, the battle system, from what I've heard, has gotten a major overhaul in its stylistic um, sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, for one thing, from what I understand, and from all the information I'm put together, the what I have so far is... When you touch one of these Pokemon, you send out one of your Pokemon, right? And they actively walk around, like, this little battle arena thing they have. So there'll be, like, a circle arena around where um, the Pokemon is and you're fighting it. And they will actively, like, walk around the battlefield independently while you're attacking them. Yeah. And you'll be able to give them commands from there. I'm kind of so that... Nino Kuni, like, the original Nino Kuni at the moment. Yeah, a bit like that, actually. Um... More of a more of a turn based perspective because they're not gonna fuck with that shit because it's like all the tournament stuff is really big money for them. Yeah. Mm. They're not going to like simplify it to a point where they can't do that. But yeah, that's really cool. Um, yeah, the, the Pokemon Switch rumors are looking really interesting at the moment. Uh, rebooting it. Do you guys believe that rebooting it is the right idea? I mean, uh... are you talking from like a business standpoint, or do I think this reboot will work? No, I'm talking from a people... I know you two are fans of Pokemon. Yeah. What do you guys think as fans? Not from the perspective of... I mean, I like it. Because my... So you remember how the old Game Boy games were saved, but it was like sort of battery-based type of thing? Yeah, Yeah. I can't... I can't... Yeah, I can't play my Pokemon Yellow anymore. So to have a reboot and, you know... I mean, it's just another great game on the Switch, hopefully. So... Yeah, I'm a... I mean, it's a Pokemon main series game. Yeah, so, I mean... Let... Look, if it, if it gives me another reason to turn on my Nintendo Switch, I'm happy. Yeah. It, I think it's one of those things of... I I honestly think this is going to be a good game. Yeah. I don't think I'm very far-fetched in saying that. But, um... Like, having... The Switch is a really interesting console, and once I saw it come out, did you two also think, okay, there's going to be a Pokemon game on this? I mean, I, 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 th- I mean, I, For a second, I, didn't think so. I, I thought like it would be a good idea to do it. I wasn't a hundred percent sure on whether they would do it or they would keep the sort of main series Pokemon to the, to the DS. Um, mm. I had a bit more faith when Pokken Tournament got announced on the, uh, for the Switch, the enhanced version. It was Pokken, yeah. Pokken Tournament DS. Yeah, so cool. I love Pokken Tournament. Cause I mean, I, I, I saw it and I'm like, if this does well... Eat, like they may put another Pokemon game on the Switch, but 
No, just, yeah, no, I don't no. know if it was going to be another main series game or it was going to be fucking a reboot of Hey You Pikachu or some shit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think I think I only predicted it because Pokemon has reached its pinnacle on a handhold system as far as power wise goes. Because how freaking big do you think the Pokemon like games are? Like just with including all the Pokemon, all the moves, all the abilities, like a land to walk around in, and like all competitive online stuff. Are we talking like estimate size? No, you like. Let's look at all the other like DS games, all the other 3DS games. Do any of them even compare to that much content? Uh, Not off the top I of my think, head, but I don't. I, I don't think much like, DS. Um, when, when I played um Pokemon Diamond and Pokemon Emerald, and then go to the new like the newer one, I think those games had more content like in in some ways, like you know how there was like. Oh no, that definitely feels like the new games have gotten shorter. But I'm talking like in just sheer scope of like how many Pokemon there are and like how many you can feasibly fit into a handhold system. Oh no, no, that that's that's ridiculous as hell. Yeah, they're, they're, I think they're just reaching their limit. I think that the switch to console makes perfect sense, and the switch isn't even like truly a home-based console yeah. since everyone and their fucking grandmother seems to have one on the train. Like, it's gonna be one of those things where this is gonna be a system seller. Because everyone who loves Pokemon is going to want to buy this game. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can see yeah. that. I see this game doing really well. Mm, no, I can see it doing really well. And the Switch has done well already. So it's good for everyone, really. Yeah. And uh, now I believe... Now that we've gotten all the all the business out of the way... No, it's all right. <laughs> we've got all the business out of the way. Uh, Shabs, you have, a, you have a story to tell? All right, all right, all right. So... This is something that absolutely gives me the shits. So, my birthday was on 13th, uh, my real birthday is the 13th of March. Now, I had my party a few days before that, and obviously, you know, you, you know the standard thing. When someone doesn't know what to get you, they give you one of two things. They give you, give you either a discard or money. Now, I had a lot of money and all that, like birthday money and shit. So, I'm like, you know what? I was with a few of my mates on my real birthday, we were just hanging out, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to pre-order every game that I, I was, obviously I know is coming out and that I'm looking forward to. Went in. And also, I, I got a few games that I had missed out on. Things like that. And I, all in all, it came to about $945. Right? That's almost a grand to, to spend on games. That's, That's a, a lot of money. That is. A lot of money. So, I'm at the, I'm at the counter, whatever. And the, uh, the EB Games cashier says to me, he gives you the, the, the standard EB Games greeting. Hi, would you like to pre-order anything else? Now, bear in mind, I was reading off my phone. I'd made a list of everything I, I was planning on pre-ordering. Did it. It's all out of the way. Perfect. And he goes, oh, you know, do you want to pre-order anything else? No, nah, man, that's good. And before this guy even bothers to move forward with the transaction, he hits me with the... Hey man, I don't know if you've just heard, but Black Ops 4 recently just got announced. Did you want to pre-order that? No, no, dude, it's fine. I, I'm, you know. Now, in my head, I'm thinking, I've been reading off a, off a list. This guy should, it, I mean, it's pretty clear at this point. I know what I want, and I've just come in because I need to be in an EB Games to make these pre-orders. I mean, either that or a JB Hi-Fi, but generally, I normally just go to EB just because it's, I don't know, it's, just there. Can you not pre-order online? Uh, yeah, you can, but it's just, I don't know. I, we, we, we were already in there, and I, we were already like at the shopping centre and whatever. Um, and I was yeah. just like, you know what, man, I, I'm just going to sit and you know, do it here. So I'm sitting there, and he's like, oh, you know, Black Ops, I'll just go now. Do you want to pre-order that? Nah, man, it's fine. And he goes, oh, yeah, I, I noticed you bought... You know, Mario Kart 8, and I've pre-ordered a couple of Switch games. So I've pre-ordered Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition and um, Smash Brothers. And he goes, I'm like, yeah, you know, I've got a Switch for my birthday. And he goes, oh, did you know Donkey Kong Tropical Free? Yeah, I know it comes out on the 4th of May or whatever it was. I said, did you want to pre-order it? No, I did not want to pre-order it. And at this point, I don't know how visible it is, but I'm really starting to get annoyed. Because it's just like, dude, I'm... Giving you almost a grand in money, essentially. And all you got to do is put this transaction through. 
You know, like, look, I've never worked at EV Games, but I would put money on it that not every day you get someone in coming willing to drop a grand on, like, by themselves. The next part was the part where I think he just went way too far, and I, uh, this is what caused me to transfer all my stuff away from that EB Games. He turns the monitor to me. Now, I don't pre-order often. He turned the monitor to me, and he said, so this is our entire N- Nintendo Switch catalog. Is there anything you'd want to pre-order? We got this, we got this, we got this. We got... And I literally, I looked him dead in the eye, and I was just like, I don't want to pre-order anything else. I've got what I want. That's it. And I'm trying to be as nice as possible about this because, like, let's be let's be clear here. When you work in retail, you everyone knows that you you get a, a crap customer here and there. Some jobs you get a crap customer like fucking really often, and like I don't want to be one of those customers. So it's like I'm always as patient as possible. But it's like when you work in retail, you've got two jobs: make sure the product you're selling me is good. Which you know, if you're just the person behind the counter, you're probably not the person in charge of you know, making the games. There's no one in the back of an EV games with their little ROG laptop coding God of War for me to pre-order. You know what I mean? Um, but it's like, the only other job you have to do, the only real job you have to do is make sure your service isn't so terrible I avoid buying things at your store. Because dude, I, like it, the store we were at is the closest EV to me. Like People will value convenience more than almost anything. So I literally, after that, I got out of there and I went and I transferred it to another EV that's not too far from me. And I was just like, well, well, you know, I'm talking to the to the manager there and he goes, hey man, quick question, if you don't mind me asking, like, is there any particular reason you're transferring all your pre-orders? Because there's a lot of pre-orders. Is there any reason transferring them here and not over there? I go, yeah. And here's the funny part. It turns out that guy was the manager the one that was serving me at the old store. And... What a what a what a model employee. Tell me about it. But I just, I just told the, the, the manager of the second store, I go, Yeah, the, the previous manager shit me because he kept trying to get me to pre order more stuff. And I told I told him, I go, look, I get you guys have your KPIs to hit and everything and look, I'm I'm not gonna shit on anyone for doing their job. But ask me once if that's all I want and just leave it at that. Like if if they had had if they'd given me better service, I would have come back at a later date and bought more shit when a new game comes out. You know, maybe next year I do the same thing if for some reason I just have that money to throw around. But to sit there and just try to forcibly push on it, one of two things is going to happen. I'm going to go to a different store or I'm going to go to your direct competitor who's about 30 meters away in JB. It's so... It, like these days especially, because you have digital marketplaces between Steam, the PSN store and Xbox uh, Xbox Marketplace you have so many you have so much competition that you can't really afford to have shit service you know I mean it's it's just it burns me you know what I mean yeah no it's a bit ridiculous for like a person spending dropping a grand and you're going you know I think I can squeeze a few more what's the point guy? man it's just like let it happen. Like, I'm not the person you should be trying to upsell. If you're going to talk to anyone, talk to the mother who brings, like, a small kid in and says, oh, hey, have you heard about this game coming out? Maybe a kid would want that. You're going to have more luck with that than you ever will trying to get me to pre-order more shit when I'm dropping on Mr. Grand. I'm Middle Eastern. We don't let go of money easily, and I'm your target? I mean, come on, man. Like, not the smartest move, but, oh, well. I think it's a. <laughs> how can you how can you do that? Like, what goes through your head when you're doing that? Like, this guy this guy definitely has this guy's got some more money in his pocket. I know it. But like that, this is a guy who wants Deep Strange Journey. But that's my point. That's why I said like I was reading off a list. It's not as if I'm someone who didn't think about what I wanted. Like it's pretty clear I put some thought into what I wanted and what I didn't want to pre-order. So. Why you're trying to get me to pre-order more of all... Sorry, of all people. It's... I can't see the logic behind it. I wonder how desperate he was to get, like... You know, his sales milestone done. Yeah, but you, you see, here's the thing. As a consumer, I don't care what goes on behind the scenes of your store. 
if you make my experience trying to give you money a bad one, I'm never giving you money again. Ever, ever since that day, I literally, I felt bad this one time, yeah? Because I went in and I couldn't remember if I'd pre-ordered God of War that day. Oddly enough, I'd actually forgotten it. I went in and I was just, I just happened to be there. And I gave them my EB membership card. And I'm like, hey, can you just check if I've got this on pre-order? They looked and they're like, oh, okay, did you have anything else on pre-order? But I thought, like, no, I transferred everything away. And the look I got from the employee, I didn't mean for it to come out rude. But they were like, uh, they just went, oh, uh, why? And I, I said, well, your, your manager was annoying as hell, trying to get me to keep pre-ordering more stuff. So I transferred it away. <laughs> Oh my god! Like I said I'm sorry. I don't. I don't mean to be rude, but um, you know, I had a bad experience shopping here because of your manager, so I'm just not going to shop here anymore. I've never had that. I, I've never had the upsell or the pre-order shit like ever with an EB. You've game. never. Like, hold up! Hold up! Hold up! You've never had anyone at an EB Games. No employees. They're not asking you if you want a pre-order. No, never. Really? I've pre-ordered stuff at EB Games. I've asked to pre-order. I've gone and I bought tons of shit at EB Games, and I've been to EB Games often, but I've never been asked if I wanted to pre-order anything. Man, you are lucky. But never. <laughs> so I can't relate to this experience. Like, at, at, the, at the second one I transferred to, I'm just trying not to name the stores, really, but at the second one, I've, I've been there a few times and I've bought stuff there, and I've never been asked, do you want to pre-order this? Do you want to pre-order that or whatever? There have been times that I've said to them, like, what's coming out, things like that. And then they tell me, but... Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's that perfect. is fine. But I've never been, like, hassled to pre-order stuff. You know what I mean? It, it seems so counterintuitive. He's pro- I get it, he's just doing his job, but my God, man. Slow down a little. Yeah, like in my store, like like in that door. Oh, God. Oh, wait. Oh, it's, uh... <laughs> So, F said the D word. Oh no, but yeah, like, no, seriously, like, I, I go in, buy a game, they're like, do you want anything else? Do you want to make a pre-order? You just say no, and you just walk out the door. It just sounds like this guy is just like, hang on, before you walk out that door, you want to make a pre-order. Oh, man. But it's just like... Do you know the ghost of Total Biscuit's going to haunt us for the rest of our lives because of this conversation? Oh, but it's like... <laughs> I'm, I'm actually just more surprised at the fact that Dacto has a store and it's such as one guy named Jim selling games out the back of a van. Hey, <laughs> Game Peddling Jim is a proud member of Dacto Society. Hey, once upon a time, we had a water park. I don't trust that. <laughs> I, 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 I don't trust that whatsoever. We had, a water park. No. We had a water park called Waterworks and you know what it was full of? Just blow up fucking pool shit. That's uh-huh. all it was. That's essentially what the park was. Oh, oh God. <laughs> that sounds... So I mean, t- sounds to so be horrible. fair, the, the... Speaking of horrible... <laughs> to be fair, the area, I'm origi- the area I'm originally from had, like, a discount Nitro Circus. And by that, I mean, it was a bunch of 15-year-olds on dirt bikes that would destroy the local park every Friday, Saturday night. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Sometimes there's people outside my home, and then they're told to go back in. <laughs> Man, such as the luxury. You you do not know how little you do, you do not know how little regard people have for the law until you you're driving down a road, you get to a roundabout and you have to give way to someone on a razor scooter. That actually. <laughs> no, I, I've had the thing where kids have like pulled rope over the road. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, what? No, oh, they've like the kids start off in the middle of the road. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And we go down there like. They've run to each side, pretending to pull rope over the road, and just like, I'm gonna... But I mean... Never more have I wanted to kill five children. (laughs) This took a grim turn. Yeah, this took a dark turn. Let's let's bring it back. (laughs) Let's bring it back to something more positive. Yeah, should we keep that? Uh, Tell me about your... (laughs) Anthony, tell me about this Kingdom Hearts 3 news. Alrighty. So, there's... On, like, the 18th of May, which is this coming, like... Well, technically the 19th for us, so Saturday. A select group of invited community members and outlets will be attending Square Enix Kingdom Hearts 3 Invitational Premier Event in Santa Monica, California. 
which it, it, it is an invite only event, so select people will be only allowed to go. Yeah, so all of us will be there. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> yeah, we're all gonna, we're all, <laughs> we're all major in players. So these people will be going around to um, get their hands on the game and like get their impressions of like the experience they had. So uh, yeah, people... I've heard it's in development. Oh, oh yeah, it's still in development. <laughs> now development uh king of us 3's uh, release schedule has been a bit of a train wreck honestly uh 23 i think it was announced in 2013 and it, from there on like it just look if if persona 5 was coming out back in 2012 i'm sure that that king of us 3 is going to be just as good. no speak of persona no no speak no, 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 no. Persona... hold on hold on before we leave kingdom hearts i don't mind the fact that they delay it a bunch of times. I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it, it annoys me if you want to play a game and it gets consistently delayed. And I know that because I'm a yeah. fan of Rockstar, but where I don't, like the one thing I don't understand about Kingdom Hearts is the naming conventions for some of their games. I what you mean, Dream Drop Distance, Electric Boogaloo, with Oh, man, no, I'm referring to... Featuring Dante from The Devil May Cry. No, I'm referring more to... 0.2... No! Death by Sleep, Fragmentary Passage. No, I'm referring to 358 over two days. <laughs> I saw... Th- I saw that name, and I, I... I literally... One of my mates is a massive Kingdom Hearts fan. And the first thing I said to him oh is... Oh, my God. Can you please explain this? Did they not have a name that was a bit more... Conventional? Kingdom Hearts Days would have worked a little better, honestly. That's what we call it. Yeah, Days. Yeah. Um, what is the... What is it like? Kingdom Hearts 2, uh, Final Mix, full version or whatever it is? Like, was, yeah, Final, so here's the, that's the final Mix version. Prologue. Here's, here's the, it's essentially an expansion. I, I bought the collection here, the PS4 one, which has 1.5 and 2.5, right? All good. Yeah. One of my mates who has never been a like it's, it's not that he hasn't been a fan just never bothered to try kingdom hearts and all that and he goes oh man you know the rest of you have been playing it so what's you know where, like if i was to buy it, where would i start oh all right well you'd want to start with 1.5 then you want to play 2.5 and then 2.8 and he literally just looked at me and he just went fuck me bro how many of these collections are there I'm... Well, I played 2.8, and then you're going to want to go back to 1.456, and then 365 divided by 2. <laughs> and then we... I mean, it's... Then you've got to find a chain. I, did... Thing is, every... I didn't even bother. Every... I didn't even bother yeah, to no, do that's... maths in year 11 and 12. I'm not doing it when I want to play a game. Listen, that's my favorite thing about King of Hearts. Even describing that, those are all real games. And this is all before you get into the confusing itself plot. Dude, everything from the mobile game to, like... That yeah, everything is canon. Yeah, everything everything is in canon. Kingdom Hearts is canon. So literally, peop- there are people out there who have only played one and two, and they're gonna jump into three, going, "Wow, who's that?" Dude, but, who's but they between the fuck's a keyboard. Dude, between uh, the start of one and just... the end of one, I was still saying, "What the fuck is going on?" I, I, they should take a, uh, a page out of the SMT book, which is nothing is canon and everything is canon at the same time. <sighs> Uh, Atlas, fuck you. Also, speaking of Persona 5, the voice actor for Anne, or Arn, whatever, Erica Halacha, has been selected to attend this event. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So she, she's apparently a King of Hearts fan. <laughs> let's, let's add Persona 5 to the uh, the long list of games that I still need to play. Dude, you're missing Dude. Out. <laughs> Man, I... Uh... We need to start streaming shit just to get you to play all the games that you should have played. Have you not? Yeah. Have you not seen what my upload speed is, Josh? I don't have NBN yet. I'm not scheduled to have it till 2020. I do. Come on. What? No, man. You're like two hours away. Fuck that. I'm gonna go (laughs) over there just to play a game I may or may not enjoy. (laughs) Come over here and play this 100-hour game with me. It'll be fun. God no. Let's not sleep the entire time and stream it the entire time and watch people slowly go insane. And, and bro, he's not fucking with you. That game, story-wise... Yeah, I know. Is, I know uh, how... I know, yeah, I know how big I'm it still is. trying to beat it. That's how long it is. Oh, yeah, no. All right? Yeah. Listen, I've just started the fishing quest. Uh, I have. Hey, look, look. Uh, guys, I'm not averse to big games. I've played about 10 hours of The Witcher 3, yeah, so I think I'm ready. And, right. and I have just offended... Any of my mates who have played The Witcher, <laughs> I, I I I'm sorry, I can't. It takes me so much to get into big games, so it's so hard yeah. for me to like get invested in something big. I think that's the last 
big game that I really got into was probably Fallout. Fallout 4. Oh, yeah, well, that's a big game. But that's just a basic... That, that, that's technically a game. Yeah. Um, no. Well, if you're trying to get into SMT at all, uh, now's a really, really bad time because uh, Deep Strange Journey is coming out. Yeah. Oh, that's Deep about as user... Yeah, that's about as uh, user-friendly as uh, uh, a cactus. <laughs> as a cactus. <laughs> as a cactus. Dude, Deep Strange Journey is like... Okay, so the SMT games are known as like oh, the Dark Souls of RPGs. The Dark Souls and, of Persona. Yeah, they're fucking. They're just really difficult games. And Deep Strange Journey is unfair by the fan standards. It is nightmarish sometimes. Actually, while we are talking about upcoming games, there's one more game I want to bring up, and I'm only saying this because I've played the demo, and that's Detroit: Become Human. Okay. All right. Yes, that's fine. Ooh. I thought you were going to say Fortnite, and I was going gonna... <laughs> to start driving, boy. No, I was going to talk about PUBG. Oh, God. I was going to talk about Black Ops and Oh, God. No. But listen, uh, listen, listen. I, I tried the demo for Detroit Become Human. One of my mates has been raving about this demo and all that, and I'm like, so, man, it's it's so good. I hope, that, you know, the full game is like this because it's just phenomenal, and I'm like, I've never been a fan of Quantic Dream. You know, not. I don't think they're they're bad or anything. It's just not my type. What of have thing. they made? Uh, from what I remember, I think they're the team behind Beyond Two Souls and um, what's Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain. That's the other one I couldn't think of. Okay, I'm not a fan. Yeah, no, no, look. I mean, it's one thing to say they're bad, another thing to say not a fan. I don't mind them. When people say they're not a fan. Things like that. Oh no, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not even saying. But here's 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 where it, here's where it happens. I started the Detroit Become Human beta now. Uh, not beta, sorry, demo. And I'm like. I started playing and I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm walking around this uh, this apartment. Yeah, the game looks pretty nice, but um, it all started when I knelt and picked up a fish. Um, As all good stories. I, I, I'm like, this is gripping. There's like a hostage situation, you know, and the android you're controlling is picking up a fish. Um, but, you know, you go there and they try to make it almost like a... I guess you could call it like a, a... I don't know if it's a race war, a space war between like the humans and androids. You play this this android who's negotiating for this kid's life. And I've got to be honest, it, it did the one thing that you should never... They should always try to avoid doing in a game like that. Which is, I did not give a fuck about anyone. I honestly couldn't have cared what had happened. There's like a defective android holding a gun to this kid's head and I... I'm like... No... Think about what you're doing. No, stop. No, I have a, I have a, the terrible thing if I ruin games like that because I'm one of the people who's like, oh, I'm a robot. Cool. As soon as I get a gun, I'm gonna start shooting everyone around me. Because, no matter the context. Just sitting there, they're like, oh, man, like they, they, they try to make it. They try to make you really care. Like I told him, I told the defective android, I go, oh, if you let the kid go, I promise nothing will happen to you. The moment he lets the kid go, I a sniper gets signaled to shoot him and he's like you lied to me I'm like yeah I did but you let the kid go why should I care like I don't care if the thing has a hole in his stomach the size of a cannonball because of the sniper shot I I met this thing like four minutes ago and it held a gun to a kid's head why would I care about it I love the fact that it's like you're saying here is like their one fatal flaw was the fact that I don't give a moral shit about people so androids are going to be a bit of a stretch like, like, here's the thing. If it was, if it was a case of, um, like, I know it because it's a demo. There's not a lot, but there was no real build up to it. It just sort of throws. It's like, hey, look, there's a kid. Guess who's negotiating for it? And I'm like, fuck, we're really doing this, eh? Like, I'm, <laughs> I showed up. I'm like searching. I'm like searching the kid's room, and I'm like. Like you find the little uh, tablet, and it's got a video, and the, the android's name is Daniel. And it's like, this is Daniel. He's my best friend. And this thing has like the most menacing fucking grin. And I'm like, they are lucky I'm not playing one of the cops holding a gun to this thing's head. Otherwise, I would have shot it. It looks like the stuff nightmares are made of. How is this kid calling it his best friend? It's one of those games where like, I understand its message, but I'm also afraid it's going to get way too heavy handed. It's like, look, androids are people too. Look, androids are people too. Okay, if that android is meant to be a person, so is a fucking Roomba. I'm sorry, I can't feel for androids. 
The people that the people that feel for androids in that game are probably the same people that started with the railroad in Fallout 4. Just the worst kind of people that no one likes. <laughs> oh, that's so horrible. Uh, it's, it's a game. It's a game that's going to be an interesting. It's going to be an interesting mark on gaming because I can see that either it's going to be a really fucking big deal and it's going to like persist for generations of people who are going to talk about it, or it's going to be one of those games where it comes into relevance and then it fizzles out in like two days. Look, I'll give it. Look, don't get me wrong. I I can give them credit for trying to do a genre that's not really. You think it's like the, the most popular, to say the least, but it's just, yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> like, let, let's be clear, there's a reason that you don't see a lot of major visual novel releases, and it's on no one's top 10 games list, you know what I mean? And if it is, yeah, no, it's not what it seems, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. off the top of my head, the last, you know, big visual novel type game that I think people went nuts for was... Uh, what's it called Doki Doki Literature Club, and yeah. that is I not a not that, that is not a normal visual novel. No, it is not. That is a very, very clever use of subversion, and that's why it's popular because it's a complete misconception of what a visual novel. Absolutely, is. it's a complete dis- like it's a deconstruction, but it's also very surreal. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's no, a complete meta game, and it's also advertisement for a game they're making, yeah. which is. Mm. But look, it does it does do a couple of cool things. Like when I finished the demo, it was like, here's a uh, here's a flowchart that shows all the choices you could have made and things like that. There are a lot of choices to be made, and look, when you when you start the game, it does tell you like when you pick your difficulty that on a on an easier difficulty it gives you essentially more chances to not lose characters and things like that so characters can die and things like that but it's like you know maybe it's just because the demo wasn't long enough for me to get invested into the story and maybe like maybe it's just not my kind of game but for me personally i would not buy this game on launch no i wouldn't either i i just don't think it interests me enough yeah which is, it's unfortunate, because it's definitely, it's one of those experimental games. Which you, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. But I also think I'm going to get almost the same experience watching a Let's Play. Yeah, I can see why you do that. And that's the worst thing, because it's a game completely based on choice. But I also feel like, if I watch someone play this, it's going to be like, I'm still going to get the experience of it. Yeah. Mm. Obviously not the same, but like, those games wear out really quickly, because... There's only so much you can do. I mean, it's not like D&D or like a tabletop game where you can just keep saying shit. Like, there's just clearly defined limits. And when you make a game about, oh, look how limitless this is, people really quickly find the limitations of it. Yeah. Mm. Well, you find it as just a story. That's all people are going to see of it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, story-based games are really hard to replay in the beginning with. Like... Yeah. Playing a mechanics-based game, like you can play Mario over. And over oh, so and see oh I disagree with that. I think if it's a story-based game, it depends on how much you like the story. For example, I I would argue that Grand Theft Auto Four is a story-based game, and I'm currently replaying that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. No, I'm not saying that is a general rule of thumb. Is that a game with heavy story, like an RPG, is inherently harder to replay than something like Mario, where it's purely mechanics. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, replaying Mario Brothers 3 is way easier than trying to replay a Tales of game. I wouldn't know, I've never played any of the Tales of games. I, I, God damn it, Charbel. I'd say it's, uh, that, that's kind of, um, subjective, but... No, it's definitely subjective, but I find there's a general rule of thumb. Right. Mm. I, I, I can agree with that, like, a big RPG, like, you, like, because RPGs are big, you're, you're bound to get, like, burnt out if they're... They're the big boys. Yeah, they're, like, the fucking... Like, the the the, di- the gigant was the, the fucking uh, what? Yeah, the, this... the gigant was. Just gonna... oh, no, just ignore it. God damn it! All right, well, let him say shit. Uh, I know that this has been kind of a lazy podcast, so let's get into something where me and Charbel can scream. Oh, I'm sitting up for this. Like... The Kickstarter debate. Hang on, to finish off that topic from before. Um, yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah, the the embargo for this KH event will end at 6 a.m., which is 11 a.m. for us, meaning that we'll get more news on the game and more footage. Man, that's really convenient for us and inconvenient for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> for once, be... I love living in Australia sometimes. I was going to say, for once, being Aussies paid, paid off. 
I know, like, not every now and then, like, it's really inconvenient timing for other places. It's really nice for us. It's like, oh, man, like, we're not going to be able to get this till 4 o'clock in the morning in Australia. Man, it's, like, 3 in the afternoon. I'm feeling good. Oh, 2 a.m. for uh, Nintendo Direct. That, that, that's spot on. Oh, I didn't mm. sleep mm. anyway. Mm. <laughs> didn't need it. I didn't want it. Okay, okay. Now, uh, so we're going to wrap up every week with a, with a nice debate. Uh, one of us will play a moderator, and one of us will play each side. In today's debate, we're going to do Kickstarter. Do you do it? Like, just in general. Shabelle will be playing the anti-Kickstarter villain. I don't need to Shabelle play a villain. I hate Kickstarter. Shabelle is a anti-Kickstarter villain. Absolutely. And I am the uh, pro-Kickstarter hero, as always. And Master Amph here is going to be our little mediator. I'm just neutral, man. Yeah, you're going to step in if we're... We're getting too heated. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ding, 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 th- ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh, man, let's start this off. Now, I'm just going to say, Charbel, you have the floor. Present your arguments. I don't need... Uh, look, if... We, yeah. I, no, you listen to me. You Fake listen news. to me. <laughs> Fake news. Oh, man, this is Red, rude. Okay, no, no, no. In all seriousness, Red. in all seriousness, I'm going to present... You got no stats. I'm going to present this argument the same way every Kickstarter I've seen is presented. I will present okay. my argument in the future if you give me $20,000 up front. That's all I say, because I'm telling you this, if I went to a restaurant, if you go to any restaurant, you don't pay the bill before you get your food. You eat, then you ask for it. I don't like paying for a product that's not out. You know what I mean? It's part of the reason I don't pre-order, but at least with a pre-order... I was about to say... You listen to me. With a (laughs) pre-order, generally, I can do my research. They've released trailers for the game. There's gameplay. There's things like that that I can sort of point out and say, okay... I feel like this is something I'd be keen for. With kick, that's the those are all the signs of a good Kickstarter. But that's my point. When I see a Kickstarter and it's made by Jonathan in his bedroom, and he's asking me for fifty grand, I sort of look and I'm like, look, unless you can put out some sort of demo or something to play, I, I can't, I can't back this. It's one thing to go to a retail store because not everything is there. But these days, any anyone can make a game. Right, and as much as I love that, I mean, all of us did study game design. The downside mm. to that is anyone, and I mean anyone, can make a game these days. The amount of times we've seen shitty Steam asset flips. I want like to hold on. Like, I only want to correct you on that part. I don't think anyone can make a game, but anyone can attempt to make a game. Hey, you know what? I agree with that, but I just don't like. Yeah. But here's here's the thing: when it comes to something like Kickstarter, when it's done by someone who's unproven. I want to see your finished product first, then I will judge if it's worth my money. And look, some Kickstarters have been successful, they've been great. I had in time was Kickstarted, and that, that looks phenomenal, I want to get around to playing it soon, but not for every had in time you see, there's 50 games that show up, they go on Kickstarter, and they always follow the same pattern. They ask for a de- they ask for a decent amount of money. It could be anywhere from you know twenty thousand dollars to you know eighty, a hundred thousand dollars, and they somehow always make that mark. And then after that, for the first few weeks, you see constant updates. Then it comes to like once a month, then once every six months, and later on down the line, they either stop communicating or they say that oh sorry, the money's all gone. We couldn't finish the product, um, and no refunds. Bye. And I can't I can't put my faith in something that's unproven. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll finish my little part of the argument by saying this, yeah? Let's let's okay. say you went into a restaurant and you have full knowledge that this chef has never cooked a meal in his life and he's about to make something extremely fucking exquisite. But you have to pay up front for this, for this product to happen. Would you do it? Bon appetit. Not the same thing. Not the it's same the same thing. principle. Yeah. You're being asked to pay for an idea, not a product. Yes. That is the, that is the concept of Kickstarter, but, an investment in general. But your your ideas are worth money. It's like it'd be like if someone no one gets paid to think. You've heard that saying. No one pays you to think on a job. I'm not gonna no like no, it'd be unless you're a consultant. It's, it's it's like no offense. Everyone has ideas. You know, everyone has ideas. You can I can go to you know family friends I have that don't even play games. And say all right, can you give me an idea for a game? And they will give me an idea. And once in a blue moon, it's a good idea. Would I give them money for that idea? No. I'll give you money for a finished product. It's that simple. In the end, they're just ideas. That's it. 
Yes, and it is the people who forge those ideas through blood, sweat, tears, mostly tears, that allow these things to happen. But that needs some monetary gain, which is where crowdfunding comes into play. Because not everyone is going to have access to things like uh, investors and publishers and such. So do, should we exclude those people from being able to find funding? No, but there are, there are plenty of websites where you can make a build and put it up. Look at Game Jolt. Look at... Yeah, I know. Master Amph here has is YouTube famous because of Game Jolt. <laughs> but, uh, YouTube famous. But it's like you can you can make your own you can make your own website, promote it yourself, and it, it costs you nothing. You can literally make free websites and give yourself free promotion. Yeah, but it's, will people see that website? Or maybe there's this website where let, let's let's all pretend where it's popular. Mm-hmm. You can upload your idea and your concepts and your build and such. And then you can say, oh, I'm looking to make this. I want to make this a full product, but I need monetary backing. And people can voluntarily, if they wish, put money into it. And then that would allow them to make the game. Here's, if only such a website could Here's exist. my thing. Where does that money go? Tell me. To the, person. To, to the person, but I'm saying, what are they using it for in terms of developing their game? Uh, Kickstarters, the Kickstarter that I've backed mostly, uh, have breakdowns of how the money usually gets okay. spent. And a lot of the time, it's just living costs. Because these are always, almost always, you're watching them like, oh, these are projects of passion. we're a small team, we need we need to make ends meet, but we really want to make this, and we need time to devote to okay, it, so but, we need to make ends but meet. But here's the thing. There are, there's, a, there's another website I want to talk to you about. And it's a website where people who are looking for people to work for them can post advertisements for jobs. It's called seek.com. Oh my God. Like, that's my point. Like you can, you can get a job and you can make a game in your spare time. There are 24 hours in a day and there are seven days in a week. I know no one that has zero hours of free time on their hands. I know people who are straight up workaholics and still manage to make time for themselves. If this is a passion project, then, you know, and I'm not saying this to, to be to be an asshole or anything, but you need to understand that sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Look, if you can manage to get your Kickstarter funded, congratulations. I'm just saying I don't feel comfortable f- giving someone money because they had a great idea. I don't care how That's perfect. I don't care how good your pitch is. But I want to wait, see a finished product, and say they say the game get, comes out and they charge 50 bucks for it. If I look at it and I say, you know what, that's worth 50 bucks, you will have my $50. But if I, if I look at it, and I'm looking at your little Kickstarter video, and a lot of the time, you can't tell me this doesn't happen, Josh, but a lot of the time, it's just, you know, five dudes in a room, and they're like, yeah, no, here's the game we want to make. And it's just maybe some drawings done by the by the group's artist or something. And you, you see either very basic builds or in some cases no build at all. And they sit there and they're like, yeah, we, we want $80,000. I wouldn't... Yeah, no, that's I'm true. sorry, I wouldn't give that 80 cents. You've lost me. It's... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to fund Oxygen. You got, you got to... When I, when I walk in at a game store, a restaurant, a clothing shop, I don't... I don't give the money based on what I'm going to have in the future. No, I get my product. Or in the case of, say, a pre-order, I pre-order a product from a reputable retailer, then everything happens. Because at EB, if the game doesn't come out, it gets cancelled or something, what do I do? I walk into that EB Games and I say, yeah, I had X amount of money on this. Transfer it to this game that is coming out. Whereas on Kickstarter, I still say that one of the... Weirdest stories I've ever heard was the one I think was at Ant Simulator, if you guys remember, where one one member of the team was saying, "I'm sorry, the game's not being made because they mismanaged the money, and by that I mean they spent it on I think it was like coke, alcohol, and hookers." Yeah, that was Ant Simulator. Yeah. that's a really that was a really off brand. Like that's famous in Kickstarter, like the indie. I, yeah, I know, I know that's the the extreme of how bad things can get. But it's still a... That can happen with, like, real products, too, with real investors. You are playing, like, the mini-investor player, but you essentially have no default, right? Yeah. 
I get that that it's look, it is. It does sound really shady. Like, yeah, dude, I got this idea. Just drop in the hundred. Yeah, but there, there is a big difference between but, being a proper investor in a product and just Kickstarter. When you invest in a product, no, there, there are actual legal ramifications. If that game doesn't come, if that say it was a game I invested in, and I give someone a hundred grand, I can take legal precautions. I have control where I can sit there and say, I might negotiate with the guy and say, all right, well, if you're going to get a hundred grand, I want full control of this money. I want to know what's being spent the way you say it is. I want to know that I'm not being, you know, not being you know, strung along here. Kickstarter, you're sitting in front of a computer and you're like, oh, hey, this is awesome, man. This guy's going to, this guy's going to make a massive MMORPG and he only wants me to give him like 10 bucks. Oh my God. Never back that shit. Never back that shit. Anyone who says they're making an MMO. Man, I saw I saw one. I can't remember what case it was. I remember it was being it was covered by Larry Bundy Jr. in one of his videos. I don't know if any of you watch him. But it was No, I do, I do. It was someone who made an MMORPG, right? And the whole thing behind it was you could buy land in the game and you'd be able to sell that land down the line for a profit. And I sat there and I just said, if someone pitched that to me and ask me for five bucks, I still wouldn't purchase that game. Well, like, with real with, with, As in, you'd be able to sell that land down the line as if it was a house that you owned. But... There are people... Blizzard can't even fucking... There are... What? What makes you think you can? There are people who put, I think it was over 500, even over a thousand bucks into that game from memory. And... I mean, I'm just, th- this is, this is what annoys me about Kickstarter is, and I say this with all due respect, I appreciate people trying to be ambitious, but sometimes people get too ambitious for their own good and it suckers gullible people in. Oh yeah. That's my point. I, on a, I, I honestly feel like I could make a, a video right now saying, hey, what's up? My name is Shabu Chicken. I'm going to make this, uh, this, uh, hero based shooter to compete with Overwatch. And I, but who thinks no matter like no matter how bad it is, I guarantee you someone will still give me thirty bucks. Yeah, no, definitely. All right, so I've gone onto the Kickstarter main page here, and I've gone to the video game section just so I could like have a look at what's being what's being made. The uh, the the games that got the highest funding have free demos. Okay. Uh, the first two have free demos. One looks like it's really inspired by Cuphead called Steamboat Billy and the Curse of the Leviathan, which kind of looks cool. Um, 25th Anniversary Collection for Myst, if you guys... Did you guys play Myst at all? No, I didn't. M-Y-S-T? I've heard of it. I've heard of it, I haven't played it. It's like a, it's like a, uh, Peter Molyneux kind of... And you've lost me. Yeah, like God kind of game. (laughs) <laughs> what the word Peter Molyneux I'm sorry I'm sorry I, one, my, one of my pet peeves when it comes to games as a consumer is I hate when I see a game it has all this stuff promised to it and it's not in the game yeah to be fair because we're designers we know that he's probably just saying no dude even even, even, even if you're not like just think and say maybe it's best to wait this time I was one of... The, I yeah. got criticised by so many of my mates because I said, I don't think No Man's Sky is going to be as good as it's been hyped up to be. The amount of people who criticised me and what happened, they didn't have like 90% of the stuff that was promised. There is like a three-page article on Reddit detailing everything that was promised with links to the evidence that didn't make it into the game. Please tell me you told them I told you so. Oh man, I, I did it in oh, writing, I sense. did it in, like verbally and in person. Because cause it's just like, this is what the modern game industry has become in a sense. It's become a whole bunch of overambition. How many games get hyped up and then fail? Yeah, I've, I've kind of become wary of it where like, people keep listing features and once they go beyond like five, I'm like, alright. Man, this is there happen. are games that I get hyped up for, that I pray do well, that I can't bring myself to pre-order because I'm, I'm scared they're going to fail. One, one which I'm glad I didn't pre-order was For Honor. I was so hyped for that game. You have no... Oh, dude, okay. I love history and I love like, just awesome combat in video games. And I looked and I'm like, this looks interesting as hell, please don't fuck it up. And they fucked it up. It looks so generic. 
it it looks so generic. It just it games. It could. We're gonna have the debate next oh, week man. on like Fortnite, and we'll have that. Oh. But um, back to the debate at hand. Look, I'm just saying, Kickstarter is definitely it. It's a demand of the indie crowd, of the people who can't get investors, who have talent, and want to make their games, and for people who want to be part of the indie crowd and want to be part of like that game's progress and that development. That that is a risk that it won't turn out, and there is the risk that like. Um, you're gonna back something stupid like an MMO. Don't do that. <laughs> like, don't ever fucking back an MMO. Never I, I, back I th- an MMO. I'm I think the it. problem with Kickstarter is there's not enough. There's not enough review on that because anyone can post anything up. Like I said, dude. At, at the end of the day, there are some Kickstarter. Kickstarter is just the free That's market. That's my point. That's all it is. People can put whatever they want into it, but it's up to the market to meet the demand. Yes. And like. If you make it and it just doesn't come through, it just doesn't come through. That's, like, part of the agreement. This is like, all right, you're placing a bet right now. 90% of the time, it's going to be fine on those really big Kickstars with really big budgets. Mm-hmm. They have fall through every now and then. That's why I don't don't ever, I don't Kickstart often and I don't Kickstart big because I understand the risks. But I'm saying Kickstarter should exist, and it's very valuable for those people who need it. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't have a, I don't see. That's the thing. That's my thing. I don't have a problem with crowdfunding existing, but it does need to be, I, I guess, in a way, regulated. Like, okay, I, I, I can understand. That's that's my thing with it. If it look, if there was a way for it to be a safer bet, because look, I don't expect every game. To come out on time, there's going to be delays, and in, in some drastic cases, there's going to be cancellations. That is that is a part of it. Yeah, but that's just part. Of, that's part of industry. But, but, but my thing is, it's such a common thing on Kickstarter that it's at a point now where I'll that's... just never back it. If your product is that good, I'll wait for it to come out. Hat and time, uh, Undertale, Lisa the that, Painful. God, that's it. Well, good that's it. Cheers. These are all projects that wouldn't exist without Kickstarter. And I know what you're advocating is you couldn't back a Kickstarter. Yeah. But it is it is part of those things. It has been proven that it can work. You have to be careful. You've got to know what it, you're doing. It, I it can work. Gonna Kickstarter, it can work, but I'm saying that there's a big difference between going into a retail store, like a brick and mortar store, and getting a game, bringing it home, trying it, and saying, okay, I don't like it, I can return this. Because you understand, you're you're buying a finished product. But I just don't. I'm not gonna pay for thin air. No, I understand. Look, I'm gonna I'll go. I'm gonna give out Josh's Kickstarter guide. He's the top four things to look th- four or five things to look out for. One, if you're gonna kickstart something, it's your first time you're that worried. Look for something that's already backed, already met its goal, and then some, and has a demo out that you can play. Mm. Those are the safest bets. The, those games are always are almost guaranteed to come out. Never, if you, you're really that worried, never back anything that hasn't already met its goal. Only back things that um have huge amount, that already have demos out, have gameplay trailers, and have realistic um, um funding goals. So if you look at something and it's like, oh man, I'm gonna make an MMO and it's gonna be two thousand dollars. That person's gonna make the world's shittiest MMO. No, because you're implying they're gonna finish it. That that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. No, but th- like. We we know how to make games. Like we know how much goes into it, and even to make a small game can be quite an expensive endeavor. Yeah. But yeah. if you're going to back something, make sure it has make sure it has gameplay footage at the very least. Uh, read everything very carefully, and make sure it's something that you would actually want to play. Mm. Look at the Kickstarter video. Is it five guys in a room telling you about the game instead of showing anything from the game? Red flag. Don't back it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. yeah, just it's really. Kickstarter is a wonderful place and you can find really good things, which is ironic because like, Kickstarter is probably a place that we would turn to in desperate times if we needed money. I know, that, Charlotte, you probably wouldn't be comfortable with that. I wouldn't be comfortable with it. Like, I, I wouldn't, if I was making a game right now, I would not be trying to do anything that I wouldn't do if I was a consumer. Like, I, I couldn't back Kickstarter. The only, the only way I would ever put something on Kickstarter is if I'd built like a beta for it first and I'd had the beta out there and I'm yeah. like 
if if I want to make this a full release, I really do need the money. But look, oh, yeah, no, I but can't like chances really chances are, if you get something to that level, you've got something to show investors, and if you try hard enough, you can find investors. Yes, mm. but Kickstarter should not be an option. Yeah, you show it down because it's look, it's it's available, it's popular, and it can work. Mm. This debate went to a weird place. We've gone the SMT neutral route here. <laughs> I wouldn't say I was neutral. I'd say I'm still pretty negative on Kickstarters. No, you're pretty negative and I'm pretty positive, but we're not really disagreeing with each other at all. I was neutral <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> F, you were quiet and neutral, just like a protagonist. F's F just kicking back with popcorn at this point. <laughs> He's just sitting back. There was a few things I was going to say, but I was talked over, but that's all right. Yeah, my bad. No, we'll have an, you know what? Go ahead, Amph. What are your opinions? I, I lost it now. God damn it, Amph. Why'd you even You know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I like the fact that Amph was meant to be the moderator, and we were like, yeah, if you feel like it's getting too heated, just stop us. He tried to stop us, and we talked over him. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting too heated, but it had already begun beyond his power. I was, go- I was given the power, but I lack it. <laughs> Oh man, you, you you had the power, but did you have the means to use it? Maybe. Oh, oh, no, uh, let, let's agree to disagree then. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. I think it's a good thing. I think you think it's overall probably more negative than positive. Absolutely. Just keep in mind that like the juice where it came out of it. Oh yeah. What's the juice on a Kickstarter? Uh, did really? Was that a thing? Yeah. Put that shit back in the vault. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, we're f- we're funny. And on that note, <laughs> this has been the uh, Safe File Podcast. Today joining me has been Anthony and Charbel. Yep. Yo. But you know, well, yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up for a second, because there is something I do want to acknowledge before we hang it up, before we like oh, cut no. it for today. Can I just say yeah. how refreshing it is that we actually managed to do this? How long did it? Oh yeah, this is the this is the second reboot of this. <laughs> we we've got like reboots, spin-offs, everything, and like not we we we. This is like the first time we've actually recorded something properly. Yeah. Done, Welcome we, to the Safe this, File Podcast. Uh, three hundred and sixty-five divided by two. <laughs> we've done this so many times. Like the amount of times we've done this, I think it was around. I, I think we're counting four times. And I think uh, this is this is probably four or five, but this is the one, boys. We got through this. Oh. It wasn't too many oh, man. Well, look, at the end of the day, you know, we'll be here every week now. That's it. It's settled. Yep. And mm-hmm. on that note... <laughs> I have been Josh. I have been Anf. And I'm Sharps. All right, next time on the Safe Hour Podcast. Probably a debate about Fortnite and that piece of shit. See you guys oh, later. Y'all take care. I'm signing off. Yep, yeah, me too. Laters.